Hi, my name is Steve Kleiman. I'm the author of TBM Performance. TBM Performance is one of a series of free, open-source apps for aircraft performance. The apps are available for Apple and Android mobile devices, and also on any desktop or laptop computer by using a browser. Please visit pohperformance.com for more details. This video is about setting up the app and basic use for flight planning. I'm doing this demonstration using the TBM Performance app, but setting up the other apps is similar. If you'd like to follow along using your browser, please go to pohperformance.com slash tbm. I'll be using an iPad to demonstrate today, but setting up and using other devices is similar. I'm assuming you've just downloaded the app, which I'll start now. This will bring up the end user license agreement page, which you should read. Scrolling down to the bottom of the agreement, I'll check the box that indicates I'm the only user of this device. If you don't check this box, you'll have to agree to the license again the next time you start the app. Hitting the I accept button will bring up the main flight performance page on tablets and larger format displays. This page shows a summary of the main computed results from the weight and balance, departure, en route, and destination pages in a single glance. There's not enough room for this page on small displays, so it's not available on those devices. Notice that there's a pop-up tip to select a group to edit the settings. You'll occasionally get tips for each page. You can see all the tips for a page in the Pages Help. Just press the Help button in the upper right. You can see that I got a second notice saying that the app is using the default aircraft. You'll need to define an aircraft to do real flight planning. Before I do that, I'll demonstrate the help system. If you press the help button, you'll go to the help page for the page you're on. As you can see, there's a lot of material. The pages are linked so you can follow links where you need more information and get back again. When you get some time, you should check out the getting started section and the inputs results and error section. Now let's define a real aircraft. One alternative is to select the aircraft page from the drop-down under the More tab, but it's easier to just hit the Edit button in the aircraft group. On smaller displays, you get to the aircraft page by pressing the Slide In Menu button and selecting the page. OK, back to the iPad. I'll hit the Plus button above the left-hand aircraft list to add another aircraft. The new aircraft will be initially populated with the same data as the current aircraft. In this case, it's the default 930 aircraft. First, let's put in the registration number. We'll call it NTEST. Then let's select an 850G1000 model. Notice that it will ask whether to use the model defaults or to retain the current settings. We'll select the defaults. It's important to add the aircraft serial number. The serial number can affect the available options, the checklist, and even the performance calculations. If you leave this as zero, the app will assume the most recent version of the selected model. Let's put in the basic empty weight and arm. Notice that the app uses a custom numeric pad for input on iPads. On computers, just use the keyboard. We can change this on the settings page, but we'll get to that later. Lastly, select the options installed on the aircraft. Like the serial number, the selection or deselection of options can impact many things. In some cases, selecting an option will make other options appear or disappear. You may notice that there's a circuit breaker editor on the bottom of the page, but that's for another video. Check out the circuit breaker editor section in Help if you're interested. Notice that the aircraft model and options that have airplane flight manual supplements have the sources of the aircraft or option data that the app uses. It's a good idea to verify these against the POH and flight manual supplements in your aircraft. You can also add more than one aircraft. Select the desired one here or by using the selector on the flight performance page. 
I'll hit done to return to the flight performance page. Now we'll want to plan a trip. There are several ways of doing this. You can touch each of the four panels to enter the detailed data in the weight and balance, departure, en route, and destination pages. I'll demonstrate this with the weight and balance panel. From this page, I find it easiest to use the quick setup button near the upper right. This is a collection of the primary inputs on the four pages. I'm setting up a trip I take often from San Carlos Airport in the Bay Area to Scottsdale, Arizona. It's an IFR trip and I'll put in Phoenix as the alternate airport. It's a longer trip so I'll fill the tanks. I'll also put in the weight for me, my usual passenger, as well as some baggage. Notice that the app filled in an estimated route distance. This is the great circle distance between the airports plus 5% for routing plus another 20 nautical miles for vectoring if IFR. This works out most of the time. If you need to file a more circuitous route, you can check the override box and plug in your own route distance from ForeFlight or other planning app. Since this is a trip and payload I take often, I'll hit the Save as Trip button to save this configuration so I don't have to enter this data in the future. Then we're done. The Flight Performance page gives us the big picture. We can see from the Weight and Balance panel that the CG remains within the envelope for the whole flight, even if we have to go to empty. Notice that the takeoff dot is yellow. When a takeoff or landing dot is yellow, it indicates that it's near the edge of the envelope in weight or in balance, and you should verify the passenger and cargo weights. The app retrieved the METAR for San Carlos and computed the best runway and the relative winds as shown in the departure panel. The app has a built-in global airport database that fills in the runway length, width, and slope. The green area along the runway is the predicted ground roll. The yellow area is an additional safety factor that is adjustable on the settings page. If the safety zone extended beyond the runway, it would be red. We can see immediately that we can take off. The panel also gives us the required minimum oxygen pressure on the ground to safely do the flight with the given number of occupants. The en route panel shows a diagram that indicates how much time and fuel we'll need for climb, cruise, descent, and approach. The red area is the IFR or VFR reserves. The yellow area is the fuel reserve for the alternate airport. It includes a missed approach, a hold, travel from the destination to the alternate airport, and an approach. Touch the en route panel to enter an average head or tailwind from ForeFlight or other planning app. We can see that the time and fuel required for the flight is well within the green zone. By the way, during the flight I often open the en route page to put in the actual indicated temperature to check that I'm getting the predicted true airspeed. For non-glass aircraft, you could also access the climb torque page and check the cruise torque setting. Lastly, the destination panel indicates that we have plenty of runway for landing. Notice that you can select the previously saved trips using the trip selector on the upper left hand side. The trips are sorted in alphabetical order. Pressing the edit button there will bring you to the trips page. You can also get to it under the more tab. On smaller devices, you'll select the trips page from the slide in menu. Selecting a trip here or on the flight performance page will load the trip settings into the appropriate places in the flight planning pages. It has the same information as the quick setup page. In fact, you can use the trips page in place of the quick setup page if you know you want to save the trip. You can also change a trip's name. You might want to do this when you have trips with the same departure and destination but with different combinations of people or cargo. You can also change the first characters of a trip's name so that it sorts where you want. Going back to the flight performance page, notice the email button above the weight and balance panel. If you press this, it will email a summary of the flight planning results using your device's mail app and will fill in your email address in the to field if you set it on the settings page. The email button is also on the weight and balance page on smaller devices. There's a lot more detail on the pages associated with each panel. 
please explore this on your own. Again, simply touch a panel to access the associated page. On small devices that don't have the Flight Performance page, you'll need to access each page individually. The last thing I'd like to cover is the Settings page. You'll find this in the drop-down menu under the More tab. The app will automatically save data to the POH Performance servers and will retain up to four older versions. If you make a mistake, you can usually recover a previous version by hitting the Restore button and selecting a date of an older backup. Keep in mind that data on the server that has not been used in over a year may eventually be removed. If you fill in an email address and CloudSync security word, the app can transfer your data between devices, restore it if you lose your device, or have to reinstall the app. Keep in mind that we will never sell your email address or your data. Let's try using CloudSync now with data I previously saved. The security word is something you make up. It's like a password, but there is no registration process and it's not stored securely. It's only there so that someone else who knows your email address can't modify your data on the server. If you forgot your CloudSync security word, hitting the Recover button will email any CloudSync security words associated with the email address to that email address. Once CloudSync is set up on your devices, changes on one device will transfer to the other devices the next time they are active. I use it to do basic flight planning on my desktop using the web version, then transfer the results to my iPad app for use in flight. Before leaving, just be sure to start the app on your mobile device or touch a page on the app if it's already started so the data can transfer. As you can see, the app now has the trips and aircraft I set up previously. Moving on to the safety factors. These are an extra percentage added to the ground roll for safety. By default, they are set to 50%. This means that the ground roll for a safe runway will never use more than two-thirds of the available surface. You can set it lower than 50%, but the minimum safe runway is the obstacle clearance distance. This is to make sure that aircraft meet the height above threshold requirements for instrument procedures. The unit selectors allow you to choose US or metric units for altimeter, runway, fuel, and weight. This will change the units for all the relevant input and displayed results. The app has several numeric input mechanisms that you can choose from. You can choose a different mechanism for tablets, phones, and computers. The standard selection uses the device's standard pop-up keyboard or hard keyboard in the case of computers. It's best to leave computers set at standard. The vernier slider makes it easy and quick to select within a wide range. Simply tap the bar where you want it to go or drag the slider. For fine adjustments, tap the top or bottom of the slider. This is best on tablets where there's room to drag. The thumb wheel emulates the old iPhone thumb wheel selector. It's more useful on smaller devices. The numeric keypad is a good all-around choice for tablets or phones. It's the default for mobile devices. Lastly, if you find an error in the app, please send a trouble report by hitting the Send button. This will create an email in your mail app with the internal state of the app. Be sure to add a problem description. There's a lot more to the TBM Performance app. Take some time to explore. I recommend checking out the instrument procedure pages, which include a hold computer, the normal and emergency procedure pages, the risk analysis page, and the radar page. I hope this has given you the basics of how to use TBM Performance. If you have general questions about the app, have ideas for a new feature, find something confusing, or want to send some feedback, please send email to info at pohperformance.com. Safe flying.